My name is Christina Garcia and I am the owner of Layered Dimensions Interior Design in Dallas, Texas. I'm Roz and my company is Roz Murphy Design. My name is Nathan and I'm with Nathan Hill Interiors. So something that's very important to me when it comes to one of a kind, I like to, to try to bring an air of something that feels curated to every, every design that I do. That's, it gives each project its own identity. It's something that brings personality to the project, something that whenever you're looking at, it describes the clients. It's something that makes them feel more at home. To me, a one-of-a-kind item is typically something that was made by a craftsman, something that was thoughtfully crafted and has sort of a curated feel to it when you pull together a room or a space. It's something that not a lot of other people have. Maybe it's something that you've collected along the way. Maybe it's something that you've collected on um, a trip or a, something that a family member has passed down. One of a kind can also mean something that's custom made for your home. It could be the way that the item is styled. Um, it could be, you know, different layers of um, interesting elements that create a one of a kind space. So when I'm working with a client that's wanting something that's a little bit more unique in a space, something that is one of a kind, I like to talk to them about what their goals might be for that space or if there might be an area that they want to highlight in that room or if there's something that they identify with, whether it's their cultural background or maybe a trip that they had gone on, something that they're attracted to and then we can go shopping, talk about those things, look at maybe pictures that they have taken and find something that they're, they're drawn to. Often when including one-of-a-kind pieces, I like to lay the foundation for a room with a custom one-of-a-kind rug. I think using a rug as a foundation focal point for a design is crucial. It sort of sets the energy and the tone, also the scale of the space. And then from there, you layer on top of that. For example, you'll order brand new seating, but you'll take the colors of the rug to coordinate and select the fabrics. And then you'll layer in whether it's custom bespoke pieces that are made, a cocktail table or a chest or dresser. And then for the accessories, definitely using some vintage one of a kind pieces to really set the space, whether it's lighting, uh, whether it is original art or even a mineral or two just to sort of finish the space. So one of my favorite things in my own house that I take a lot of pride in uh, that, I, that I consider to be a one-of-a-kind piece is the mirrors above the nightstands in my master bedroom. Um, I worked together with my dad to design these Tremo mirrors and we, we found two mirrors that were a matching pair and we added to them and built them up, added um, an antique piece on the top of each of them repainted them and turned them into a really what I find to be a beautiful piece of, of art. It's not old or antique, but it's special to me because it's one of a kind. It's something that we created together. For me, actually, I designed a one of a kind buffet piece for my dining room. I had searched high and low in the marketplace and couldn't find something that fit my vision. So I worked with an amazing carpenter and we together collaborated to craft a piece for my dining room that I still love 10 years to this day. I think it's uh, the way that it is presented in the home. I think it is the way that it is displayed and the elements are layered on top of one another. Um, creates, you know, a, maybe a better focal to draw your attention to that one of a kind piece. Something that I like to bring into my designs is found objects, especially antiques. I find them to be unique, whether they're repurposed or refurbished something that is maybe out of place in a modern home or what might seem to be out of place, but it really brings a lot of character to that space because it stands out on its own. First of all, in terms of craftsmanship, one of a kind really brings true quality. Uh, there's thought and care involved because there's a process. And also you're sort of mirroring form and function. Of course, I wanted something that looked beautiful, but it also had to function, fit a specific size, have a, you know storage, etc. And so it was nice to marry the two. I think artisan products for um, installations are really important, specifically in spaces that are traditional. I think creating spaces or using products that are um, handcrafted really incorporate into the space very well. But I also think in very modern spaces, 
Um, it helps to soften a lot of those really harsh lines. I love going to museums and, and looking at pieces of art where you can find that evidence inside that piece of art. It brings um, a sense of humanity, something that is, it's personal. You can see that person inside the art or inside of that object that they actually created. So I think something that is handcrafted is incredibly special. Whether it's something that was made yesterday or 300 years ago, you can see those that person, that artist, and their fingerprints, their brush strokes. It's very valuable because I think the materials are important that are selected. You have natural materials versus, you know, a resin or a, a particle board. Also, I feel um, that that artisan is really trying to reflect their own personal craftsmanship and style, and so the quality just really speaks to itself. Artisan items could be artwork, they could be sculptural items, they could be items that were made in another country. We've seen African-made products that are made from tribes of women in Africa, which is very cool. And I think those items are really something that create a conversation in a space. They are some something that people find interest in and it is very unique to your home. I believe that anything that comes from nature is especially one of a kind. Nothing can ever be, ever be duplicated in nature. Um, if you look at a piece of animal hide, like a leather, uh, it came from this one specific animal and maybe they had a scar and that shows up in that, in that hide and I find that to be very beautiful. Or maybe it's the wood base of a table the grain is going to be unique only to one, that one piece. You might be able to duplicate the shape of that. However, the grain itself can, can ever be duplicated, um, as well as stone, whether it be a countertop or a sculpture, the veining is going to be unique to that one piece. The colors, that's mineral composition, and that's fabulous. I think that items that are derived from nature really have more of a sense of energy, whether it's wood or a carved piece of alabaster for a lamp. Um, I think that people just want to have something that just feels more alive, so to speak. And also those natural elements are really interesting in the creative process because they can be easily carved and manipulated, whether it's a decorative object or a light fixture or a piece of furniture, and it just adds another layer to a space. I think natural elements are huge uh, when it comes to one-of-a-kind items or whether it's even um, building products. We are seeing natural elements come in many different forms. Uh, we're seeing twigs, you know, or branches, if you will, being put on a, a kitchen table um, as a, a centerpiece. We're also seeing pebbles being uh, used underneath tubs where, you know, that's kind of a, a really neat focal point. Uh, they're used quite a bit. I, I, I've even met with a client who wanted to do an installation of some topiary type greenery, which in a really modern form is very interesting. So I think a lot of people are really wanting to bring the outdoors inside and kind of unite the inside and outside together where it can feel kind of like a cohesive space. And it's also very much something that's unique. Incorporating minerals can create an amazing finishing touch. It adds uh, a little bit of sparkle to a space. Uh, there's true genuine color when you're talking about malachite, when you're sort of getting the irregular shape of a quartz piece or selenite or an amethyst that's gonna bring you that dark, dark purple. I just think that it really can be its own sort of piece of art, so to speak when you're collecting your items, if it is something um, that is unique or something that is unusual, I think a lot of it is placement. Um, where you put the item, how you stage the item, um, what it's associated with, um, whether it is you know a bunch of different items put together, your item is gonna get lost. Your one of a kind piece is going to um, not be a focal point anymore. So I think, um, strategically uh, placing your one-of-a-kind piece is very important. In spaces that I design, I try to focus on one object and let that be the main focal point. Sometimes that's a challenge for me as a designer because I personally am a maximalist and I like to use as many things as I can and I can go through a space and, and add and add, but most clients that I work with, it's best to filter out those things and focus on one main object that's very special to them. And I also think that 
you can't have too many of that throughout a home or throughout one space because it becomes confusing to look at. Your eye needs to be led into the next space. Having a one-of-a-kind object in a space that has a given theme or maybe a certain design style is very important because it creates a contrast and I think that helps accentuate the space. It brings a little bit more attention to the overall design style or design type of, of, that, of that room. I think that one of a kind really works for any aesthetic. Uh, when you have natural elements involved, I think obviously vintage antiques work well for something like French country, a carved wood table or a rug are beautiful. And maximalism, I think finding pieces that are designed for a space that sort of are over the top, one of a kind, sort of speaks to that aesthetic. And mid-century modern uses a lot of warm woods, uh, just more maybe original art that pops and just really pulls together the space to make it unique. When you're designing a home, um, you don't have to stick to the exact style of that home. So if it is a French style home or a contemporary home, it does not have to mean that every single item in that home is contemporary or is French. So this showroom is it's full of beautiful pieces. Um, I look at all of them, whether they're my personal taste or something that I might shy away from. I appreciate the beauty that's in every object and everything that ha that's been found. I think it's all been very beautifully curated. One of my favorite pieces is a beautiful European uh, gilt mirror. And it's got a gorgeous top to it. It's a beautiful shield design. Um, I think that's something that you don't find very often in a lot of showrooms. Another piece that I found is beautiful crystal chandelier. It's got a great shape. Its size is beautiful. Its scale is wonderful. Although it is a traditional shape, it feels unique to me in, with its finish. In this space, my head just keeps kind of turning because there's a lot of really unique um, elements in this space. And I think um, again, it, you know, the different styles of home does not dictate exactly what has to go into that home. You know, one of the things that really drew my um, attention was this kind of wall feature up here that is actually, um, they're, they look like people figures that are kind of stacked on top of one, one another. And I think that that element could go really well in, you know, different styles of homes. Um, it could be a really neat uh, piece in a, a modern home. It could also be, you know, put over a, a door in a, you know, much more traditional style home. But what I like is that you have to look a little bit closer. You have to, you know, really stop and, you know, engage in the piece and, and figure out what it's doing and what it's saying. And I think that that's something that kind of drew my attention right away when I, when I first came into the space.